Hi, I'm Dr. Raj Sundar, a family physician and a community organizer. You're listening to Healthcare for Humans, the show dedicated to educating you on how to care for culturally diverse communities so you can be a better healer. This is about everything that you wish you knew to really care for the person in front of you, not just a body system. Let's learn together. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to share something a bit different with you today. You know, we've been on this journey together for a while now, exploring how to provide better care to culturally diverse communities. And I recently had the opportunity to be a guest on another podcast called 10 Minutes to Better Patient Communication, hosted by Dr. Anne Marie Liebel. Dr. Anne Marie Liebel, a health literacy expert, mixed methods researcher, is the founder of Health Communication Partners, a company dedicated to improving patient relationships through more equitable communication. You all know this by now, a big part of our work, especially when caring for diverse communities, is about effective communication. I was excited to meet with Dr. Liebel because she was a missing piece in what I was hoping to figure out, a research-focused response to the questions we were facing daily on caring for these communities. You'll hear more from her directly in a future episode, I promise. But in this episode, I had the pleasure of talking to her about the story behind Healthcare for Humans podcast on her podcast. I want to feature that episode here today. And on her podcast, I had a chance to share why I started this podcast, what my initial intentions were, and the things I've learned along the way. It's not something I get to do often on our show. So I'm really excited to share this with you. Whether you've been with us from the beginning or you're just tuning in for the first time, I hope you enjoy this behind the scenes look at the journey of healthcare for humans. It's a chance for you to get to know me a bit better and learn about what makes this podcast tick. As always, thank you for listening and being part of this journey with me. Today's episode is about communicating across cultural difference. I get to sit down with family physician Dr. Raj Sundar, who has a special interest in getting better at communicating with patients whose worldviews differ from his. Dr. Sundar is going to tell you how he approaches these questions he has and navigating what can feel like a gap between him and his patients. Before I get to Dr. Sundar's episode, I want to tell you this episode was recorded before the catastrophic wildfires in Hawaii. And Dr. Sundar tells a story about some of his patients of Hawaiian descent that I think is even more layered and nuanced and powerful now, considering the current context. So let's go ahead and turn to Dr. Sundar. Raj, it's a delight to have you on the show. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I'm just delighted again to have another podcaster and to have someone who cares so much about communication. I love that one of the taglines of your show is like teaching you the things that you wish you really had learned in med school. Yeah, exactly. And you do that by inviting the most remarkable people on your show to, to tell their stories. So it's a real treat for me to ask you. What's on your mind these days when it comes to communication or patient education? What's an issue or a problem that you are facing? The issue for me has been the difficulty in communicating with people who hold different values, beliefs, and worldviews. We all know we're different from each other, but it became so powerful for me to feel the gap, especially with immigrant communities, refugee communities, whose worldviews are so different than mine, that when they showed up to my clinic wanting care, I couldn't give them what they wanted. I believe you because we're all aware, as you said, we're not the same. But when you feel that gap and that gap keeps you from being able to provide what you want to be able to provide. So how are you facing this issue of trying to communicate across difference? I had a hard time figuring out how, because mm -hmm. as many clinicians feel, I'm trying to survive. 15 minute visits, if you're lucky, 20 to 30, get through my day, go back to my family, make sure I show up as a father, make sure I show up as a husband. You have all these roles in your life that seems like it is in a tenuous balance when you're a healthcare professional. And I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. 
But one of the things I had time for was podcasts because podcasts are a thing that you can do while doing another thing. It was a great second activity. Driving, doing dishes. We all get a lot of dishes to do. <laughs> it gave me a place to learn about different topics and be entertained, like with true crime podcast. I was just talking to you about cereal, which yes. maybe your listeners know about. But it was powerful because you could hear from the person most affected by an issue, the person who was arrested. You know, what, did, what was their experience? Did they do it? What did they see from their perspective? Two, it was deep because you could go to the nuances and questions that were uncertain, that were contradictory. And the podcasting gave space for that. Both of those caught my attention. And when I was facing this issue, I said, hey, this seems like a perfect medium to talk about culture, which can be nuanced, contradictory, dynamic, you name it. Wow. So you took your question about how do I become a better practitioner? And you turned it into a public teaching and learning space. You saw the affordances of the medium and you said, this is where I'm going to do my learning. I'm going to start a podcast series so I can learn about this thing. Exactly. There's power to making things public, I've found, because you have to be confident in what you're saying. And you have to polish it in a way that actually ultimately enhances your own learning. So it's not just my cliff notes, but I'm putting it all together and hoping to teach somebody else. And I love that your show is not didactic. You don't take a didactic tone. Now I'm going to teach you about the things you need to know. You teach through the storytelling and you don't wrap it up in the end with, here's three things you should take away from this person's story. Because it, as you said, it's much more subtle than that. It's much more layered than that. There are contradictions in people's stories. One of the things I appreciate about your show is that you resist the temptation to tie it up in a neat bow. Yeah. I think the question is, can you teach culture in a didactic way? I started with the hypothesis that you can't because I've seen it done that way, mm. where culture, cultural competence are taught in modules. Or one lecture. Often the takeaways are one stereotypical, like it collapses a multifaceted identity to this one thing and these two beliefs that everybody who's Indian holds, right? Two, cringe. it's cringe, right? Cringe. It's othering, which is that I'm normal. I have the standard beliefs. This other person is strange, different beliefs. We're going to study them and write it down. Because then we can give them the care they need by overcoming those beliefs if needed, right? I know. There's so much there. And this is one of the strangest things for me when I entered the health sector was running right into the prevalence of cultural competence. And I'm sure it had very good intentions when it started, but the way it wound up getting operationalized was highly problematic. And obviously many people are very aware of this. And I appreciate that in your show, you trust the listeners enough that they too are going to resist the impulse. Come on, Raj, just tell us what we need to know about these people and let's get on with things. So what are you learning from facing your own questions about care by turning to a communication medium and talking about it with other people in a public space. There are so many aspects of this that I could talk about. I'm learning about ways that I was actively harming the relationships that I was building with my patients, Ooh. intentionally or unintentionally. I use this example a lot because it is such a good example. It resonates with people. There's a large native Hawaiian population relatively where we live. One thing that came out while I was talking to this community leader was when we're in the clinic, when we're in the hospital, people often want to talk about their vacation to Hawaii as a way to build rapport. They say, I was just in blank place in Hawaii. Where are you from? It seems innocent enough. Maybe the clinician is well-intentioned, trying to find a way to connect because we all do that with people we don't know. Yeah. 
But if you don't understand the cultural context, the historical context, you're actually undermining that relationship because the community leader said, hey, here you are talking about vacation, but many of us, we left our state because we couldn't afford it anymore because of tourism. And now we're in a foreign place and we can't visit our family because it's too expensive because of tourism. And here you are saying you just took a vacation to Hawaii and then you want me to respond in a happy way and connect with you, then share all my vulnerabilities with you, then want me to listen to what you're saying. And I have no doubt I've probably done this in the past. And I was damaging that relationship. And I know for a fact in those instances, they didn't say, stop talking about your vacation, right? That is not the power dynamic in that relationship at all. So this gave me space to understand that. So I don't commit those, I'll say, infractions. And one of the things that I appreciate about your response there is that you're not beating yourself up for that. You're showing us, and I'm sure you're showing your listeners that You've learned that the remedy, the the way to approach this is not to go ahead and memorize, oh, I should have memorized more things about Hawaiians. You know, it's not that. It's to reflect on your communication and to keep reflecting on your communication and keep thinking about how your words land on others and keep thinking about the importance of context and keep having these conversations with yourself and with others in the space where you're going to know it's going to happen again because we're human and we're interacting with other differently positioned humans. And there's not a way to get it right 100% of the time. And it sounds like you give yourself that grace and you definitely give your guests that grace on your show. Exactly. And the takeaway with that example, yes, it's about Hawaii and the specific comment about vacation. The takeaway is also, for me, do I know enough history about this community, why they left the place they called home? What is their history here? How does that inform our relationship right now that we're building? Those are big questions. And now I'm very curious about that when I'm building relationships, way more than I was before. And taking the long view, the historical view, is a brave move because it's one of the most important contexts. We could name any number of contexts that have a significant bearing on a conversation. Taking a historical one is also, I think, a wise move because it's going to give you the historical background, the historical backdrop for the experiences of many people, many potential patients that you might see. As you get more information about what's gone historically, that's a shared history, right? It's not just one person's history. So it's also a very clever way of thinking about context that's going to have an impact on communication. Another point that I wanted to make was ways my perspective is changing in caring for people. Because another example that I provide is taking care of the Ethiopian community. You may or may not know. I know because I talked to the leader. Now I have a relationship with that community. I learned about the conflict there, especially with the Tigrayan community. So last week, when I talked to a patient, I brought this question up. I said, I know there's a lot going on in Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Is that relevant to you? Is that something you think about? For the next 10 minutes, that's what he talked about, about Worry, concern about his family, his own self-identity, and how he doesn't call himself Ethiopian anymore, say we are Tigranian. I think it was really important for that patient because that was actually what was affecting his mental health significantly, right? And I wouldn't have known to approach or even ask that question if I didn't have context into the community. Another important point is that a lot of people want to share, but they don't. And someone said this explicitly, it's like I opened the conversation so they knew I was curious enough to learn, which means that I was curious enough to listen because they've had a lot of experience when people ignored what they shared or they didn't try hard enough. So they're they're not even going to try to share something that is so vulnerable for them to this person who hasn't shown any ounce of curiosity about this part of their life. They're just here to talk about diabetes, cholesterol, and then get me out. You're saying so much there, Raj. I'm thinking about the comment you made about 
like when you put something on the table, it becomes safe for the patient to talk about it too. You issued a wonderful invitation and the patient decided to take up that invitation. In that response, you heard information that was clinically relevant and deeper into your relationship, started to have a relationship on a different level with this person. And I know sometimes the open-ended question gets a bad rep in medicine because, oh, who has time for it? And I'm wondering how much time is saved by open-ended questions because of all of the other steps that you didn't have to go through to eventually come to how long would it have taken to find out that these are the, the pressures on this person's mental health, for example. So what are next steps for you? I'd love to say, Raj, please tell us you're going to start another podcast series or you're just going to keep on podcasting forever. And you can say that if you want to, but you can also give words of encouragement if you have them for people who find themselves feeling that gap and wanting to bridge it. I would leave with the question of what does it mean for you to learn about the communities that you're part of through relationships? That's the question I'm trying to answer. And podcasting was the medium that felt right for me. I'm hoping other people benefit from it because it is so focused on stories, voice, and conversations to convey a complex topic like culture, which I think is personally making me a better clinician. But people could answer that question different ways. It could be just showing up to the community center and meeting who is the leader there. If you're seeing a lot of people from blank community, because we all have that in our neighborhoods and you may be taking care of those patients who would benefit from you knowing more about what's important to them. Thank you for that. Raj, thank you for being on the show too. Thank you for sharing your show with us, but also the story behind why you started the show. You took your reflective practice and decided to be very vulnerable and go public with it and say, I don't know this and I want to understand better than I do now. And we're all better for it. So again, Raj hosts Healthcare for Humans. I'm going to put links to that in the show notes. And I want to thank you for being on the show, Raj. Thank you again. Ian. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me on another episode of Healthcare for Humans. If you like this episode, as always, my ask to you is please share it with one other person and go to healthcareforhumans.org to sign up to be part of the community. And lastly, thank you to Tessa Chu and Maharazaki for supporting this podcast, making sure it's the best it can be, and helping with the creation and the production of all parts of this podcast. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.